Hello my friends, welcome back to Mobile Music Maker. This is Logan Jacob. Once again, I'm here to talk a little bit about the user guide. So we are moving through the user guide for Chimatica AUM, which can be found at chimatica.com slash AUM slash help. Very handy user guide if you've not read through it. It is excellent, but if you don't want to read through it, I am here to uh, help you go through it without having to read all of those words. So today we are still in the second section of the user guide, which is under signal routing. And this is a section that deals a lot with one of the most common questions I get in comments on my YouTube channel, and that is talking about sidechain compression. So this talks about multibus audio unit plugins and AUM's support of those. And one of the big uses for this is for sidechain compression. So I'm actually going to take you through today, show you how to use this for sidechain compression in one of our common and easy apps. So AUM, as, it, as I said, supports AU plugins with multiple inputs and or outputs. And as the user guide says, this is useful for feeding sidechain signals into compressors or getting separate outputs for drum parts, etc. And I'm gonna show you how to use both of those things today. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is set up a basic MIDI sound, a MIDI sequence, uh, playing some sound, and then we're gonna look at adding some sidechain compression to that. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because we've already talked about how to add things. So I'm gonna add a channel, an audio channel, and what I wanna use is uh, from Yonak, and this is gonna be Casper AU. I've got a preset in here that I like. And I'm gonna set up another audio channel, and this is gonna be our kick drum. And I'm gonna use uh, a pretty simple one. Uh, Ruse Maker is a, a great, simple drum machine app. And I'm gonna have my MIDI set up over here. So the first thing that I wanna do is add the audio unit processor Fugue Machine, which I'm a huge fan of. And we need to route that into Casper. So you go here and all playheads I'm gonna send into Casper. And over here in the Fugue Machine app, uh, I'm gonna use a preset. By the way, if you didn't know, the presets are found in this little file folder. So Fugue Machine has some great uh, factory presets for us. So I'm actually gonna use um, this one from the developer called Layers. I've been messing with it a little bit and I really like how it sounds. So I'm just gonna have all the playheads turn on at once. You can play with that preset to, to see how it sounds and, and get an idea for what it's doing on your own later on. So when I hit play, all of those playheads, if I've set everything up correctly, should go into Casper. So that's a cool little spooky sequence uh, coming through Casper, and if you're curious, I'm using the 1970 preset in uh, Casper, and Fugue Machine is generating this beautiful melody. Um, I'll do another video later on on Fugue Machine. There's also some great ones from Gavinsky's tutorial, stuff like that you can check out. If you're not familiar with Fugue Machine, it is fantastic. But that's not what we're here for. So what I want to do is, let's say that I'm making an EDM track or something like that, and I want to put in some sidechain compression so that whenever my kick drum hits that uh, it ducks out the melody track or whatever's this uh, synth track that's happening in Casper. Now I don't personally make a lot of EDM music, I don't make a lot of dance music, so I don't use sidechain compression all that much, but it is a pretty simple concept and I'm going to show you a real easy way to set it up so that you can get that kind of pulsating feel. One of the most glaring examples of sidechain compression in pop music lately is um, the Billie Eilish song, uh, Everything I Wanted. You can hear that uh, Phineas, when he was creating that track, added a lot of sidechain compression to the chords that are happening. And you, so you, even when you don't hear the bass drum, you hear that pulsing. And that's, that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. 
So on Ruse Maker, I'm just using the default um, you know, set that it came in with. We got a nice deep 80s kick. I'm not gonna even touch any of these other drum pads for now, I just need the kick drum. So to sequence that, I'm gonna use uh, Rosetta's XOX, which sets up like a um, 808 or, or any of the Roland sequencers. So uh, for bass drum, and this is automatically mapped correctly to Ruse Maker, I do have to send that signal in. So we're gonna go from Rosetta XOX into Ruse Maker. And I'm just gonna put standard four on the floor, kick drum on every beat. So if I solo that and come up here and hit play. Now you can hear that we've got that solid kick drum on every beat. And if I take off the solo and play it, Yeah, that's not bad. That's got a nice kind of drive to it. But what a lot of EDM musicians are doing these days is they're setting up that side chain compression so you really get the pulsing of that kick drum on downbeat. It ducks out what's happening in the synth and lead line. So to do that, I'm gonna add my compressor to the Casper channel. So I'm gonna to go to this slot and audio unit extension. And I know that Bleece compressor is one of the ones that has this multi-bus audio unit capability here. Um, so this multi-bus audio idea is really helpful to have. So what I'm gonna do is now I need that kick drum to feed into this compressor to generate that side chain compression. And uh, notice in Bleece compressor, I'm actually gonna turn the side chain on so that it is getting it. And I'll show you kind of how to do some other setup stuff once I get that routed. So to set up that multi-unit audio instance, multi-bus audio instance, I'm gonna select the effect node here and notice the second thing down is multi-bus audio unit instances. So this tells me, okay, Bleece compressor, compressor has some of that uh, supports multi-bus audio units. So I'm gonna put that in. Now that means that this is gonna feed into this and then go into our compressor. And we can actually see that even if we mute um, Casper, we'll see the compressor reacting to that bass drum and that's what we want that's what we want to see and we're going to hear how that works in a little bit now there is a preset for simple side chain compression if you want to use that um, i'm going to use that because again i'm not a, a really big on side chain compression myself so here's some good numbers for you to kind of see thresholds at negative 25 decibels um, I am going to kick up the gain, so this is how loud that's coming in. And you notice what that does is that makes that source a little bit more prominent. So we want our attack to be really fast. We've got, um, we could do zero MS if we wanted it to happen right on the beat. And then the release, it, depending on how much of a pulse you want, that's where you're going to mess with the release. And I'll mess with some of these uh, while we're actually listening to it so we can kind of hear what's going on there. Okay, so let's stop this. And now what I'm going to do is unmute this. I'm actually going to solo the um, Casper so that you can hear how that's affecting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that compressor out first so we can hear it, and then I'm going to bring it in so you'll hear that pulse start to make its way in. So here is how that side, side chain compression affects it. Okay, this is by itself. Now let's add the pulsing in there. So it's very obvious that we start to get that pulsing in there. And we can play with... You know, seeing how the different release and attack times change it. It's 
So even without being able to hear what's happening in that bass drum, we still get that. Now, if we want to be able to hear it, we can turn that on and now we're only hearing what the side chain compressor is listening to. Let's turn that off. And now if we go back, oh, didn't mean to click on that. And we unsolo this. So it just brings a little bit more definition into that bass drum and gives it that kind of EDM dance feel to it. And again, if we take out that compression, So you get the idea there. So pretty nice stuff. Uh, pretty simple and easy way to set up sidechain compression for those of you that like to do that sort of thing. Okay, now one of the other ways that you can use multibus audio for this is to take, uh, let's say you have a, a drum machine and you want to be able to affect each instrument differently. So there are some of these apps will let you send out the individual parts of the drum machine into different tracks. So let me show you how to do that. I'm just going to clear all of this out. Actually, in fact, I'm going to use one of our shortcuts here and clear. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. So one of the drum machines that I know has this available is Ruse Maker um, FM if we specifically say multi out or the Ruse regular Ruse Maker again if we say multi out. So let's use Ruse Maker FM this time just to spread things around a little bit. And this has the multi out capability, which means that it's going to allow us to send those buses elsewhere. So Ruse Maker FM has six different voices. So we're going to create six different channels for those different voices. Okay, and I'm actually gonna label these because I like um, having them labeled. So eh, let's pick a factory preset. Let's do deep techno. Okay, so we're gonna get, we have channel one coming into here. So we're actually just gonna call this kick. And then channel two, we are going to send in to our channel two. So if I click on this and I go to Multibus Audio Unit Instance again, we'll see Ruse Maker right there. And we have channel two automatically assigned here. And we could change that around if we wanted to. So then we're going to do the same thing over here Multibus Unit number three. four, five, and six. Okay, so let's figure out what each sound is. So two is our snare. So I'm gonna come down here. And I'm gonna say two, snare. Three is kind of a high tom. So we'll say three, high tom. So four is kind of a low tom. Five is, I'm just gonna call it noise. And then six is our hi-hats. All right, now we need to control this. So let's set up a MIDI channel. Okay, I'm gonna choose Ruiz Maker Rhythm. It's a really nice Euclidean sequencer. 
and we're gonna send that in here. Now, one of the things about using RaiseMaker FM is that we do have to change up some of the settings where things are going, okay? So I've gotta kinda of tell it where to send each one of these to. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to map these key maps over to what RuseMaker does. So uh, what RuseMaker FM expects. Now this is set up for regular RuseMaker. Since I'm using FM, I made it a little more complicated for myself. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna go to the RuseMaker website and under their user manual, it has the corresponding MIDI keynotes that it expects, that RuseMaker FM expects to hear. So channel one, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be 49, 51, 54, 56, 58, and 61. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over here and I may have to do a little bouncing around. So bass drum 49, that is the same. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is in rhythm here, I'm going to randomize it. And it's gonna create our beat for us. Now notice that it didn't put anything in the uh, low tom section. So I'm actually gonna to go to the low tom section and I want something in there. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so now when we hit play, so I want to actually have a more active hi hat. And I want to do a little bit less with the open hat. Things can be a little bit weird when you go, uh, when you do random. Okay, but you can get the idea. So now you can see that it's sending the audio to all of these. So if I wanna add something different to each one, I can. So let's say on my kick drum, I wanna add a low pass filter. Just to give it that little bit of extra oomph down low. See, I don't want that spank at the top. I want it to be a nice big kick. And let's maybe get a little bit of reverb going in there. So that's too much reverb. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. We definitely need some reverb on our snare. That's fine. And let's do something fun with this one. Thank you. 
Just get a little bit of extra weird noise in here. There we go. Give it kind of that weird little metallic sound. I'm gonna thicken those up a little bit. Yeah. Let's put a little bit of delay on them. And now if we put that all together, so you get the idea. You can play around with it and get different effects on each one just by using those multibus outputs. So a very handy little feature that is kind of baked in to AUM. All right. Next time we will. Uh, continue talking about signal routing and we'll talk about interap audio and audio bus and how uh, AUM works with interap audio and all of that stuff sending signals into other apps and bringing them back from other apps I hope you found this useful if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below uh, if you haven't already please like and subscribe to the video I would greatly appreciate it otherwise I hope you have a great afternoon bye